The Lord be with you and with, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house been broken into. You also must be prepared. For at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable to be meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward, whom the master will put in charge of his servants, to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant, whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly I say to you, he will put him in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, My master is delayed in coming, and begins to beat the manservants and the maidservants to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant's master will come at an unexpected day and an unknown hour and will punish the servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew the master's will but did not make preparations nor act in accord with his will shall be beaten severely. And the servant who is ignorant of the master's will but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating will be beaten only lightly. Much will be required from the person entrusted with much and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. When I was a little kid... My mother said that she got tired of reading to my brother and I little kids' stories. She, being boys, there was a story apparently that we liked about, uh, about heavy equipment called Mike Mulligan and the Steam Shovel. And she said she was sick and tired of reading this every day. So she thought, I'll do something different. I'll read to them about California history. And the reason that it was interesting to us is because there were a lot of pictures in this book and she could take us to the California missions and actually show us where this history happened. And of course, one of these leading figures in this story was this man named, at that time, Father Junipero Serra. Now, one day, Mom took me, Mom and Dad took me to the Mission Basilica there in Carmel, and we were there for Mass. And after Mass, we came up and stood at the altar rail, and Mom pointed out his tomb, buried beside there by Father Lasuen and Father Crespi, his uh, other good friend. And there, buried there, she said, you know, honey, one day he'll be declared a saint. That began my relationship with my patron saint. My name is Father James Junipero Moore. And one of the greatest joys of my life was back in September of 2015, October, rather, of 2015, when I was privileged to help plan the liturgy and then sing in the choir for his canonization in Washington, D.C., And one thing I've learned as I've studied more about my patron saint is that he and I share a lot of things in common. We're both impatient. We both have a heart for evangelization. We both believe in evangelizing through beauty, especially through beautiful churches and beautiful music. We both love philosophy. And we both have a longing to make this great state of California Catholic. And I think, brothers and sisters, this is the truth for almost all of us. We often find that we resonate with our patron saints, whether they be saints that we chose or saints that chose us. Now, in this Novenas theme, we're speaking about the theme of existential loneliness and overcoming this loneliness through the power of Christ and through the power of friendship in Christ. On Monday, I spoke about the need for friendship and what true friendship really is, that friendship of the good. Yesterday, I spoke for need, the need of the church and about how the Lord has, in, in fact, it, actually engineered the whole plan of salvation around us, rather than just me and Jesus. But today, I want to talk a little bit more about that church. When we speak about the church, we often limit ourselves to speaking about the church here on earth. We call this the Ecclesia Militans, or the church militant, right here on earth. But there are actually two other parts of the church, parts that we don't talk about all the time. There's the Ecclesia Patiens, or the church uh, 
suffering, or you say long suffering, or the English cognate patient, the church suffering in purgatory, the church being purified. And then there is the ecclesia triumphans, the church triumphant, which are all the saints in heaven, the souls of all who have died and have gone to heaven and are surrounding the throne of the Lord. And between those three branches of the church, there is solidarity. The saints in heaven do not forget us, but they love us still. Our loved ones who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, still have care for us. And they can be some of our greatest friends and advocates. Now, when I'm often discussing this, op- uh, this issue with some of our separated brothers and sisters in Christ, they bring this up. Most of them know that we don't worship saints, right? Only very few Protestants actually still think we actually worship saints. But they'll say this. Okay, you don't worship Mary and the saints. But can't you just go directly to Christ? And that's what I do. I say, yes, that's what we do too. However, don't you also ask your buddies to pray for you? Don't you try to get as many of your friends to pray for you as possible? Well, yes, I guess I do. Yeah. And what about our friends in heaven? Those who are not laid up with our burdens here on earth, but are completely open to pray for us all the time. These are the saints. And of course, these are those whom we must befriend. So do we know the saints? Are we friends with them? Do we talk to them like we talk one to another? Do we know our own patron saints? Do we know our own confirmation saints? Now, a great proponent of this notion of friendship with the saints as a, uh, as a vehicle to help us get to heaven and overcome our loneliness was a saint himself, St. John Paul II. One of the things that St. John Paul II really tried to do was to give us new saints. In fact, St. John Paul II canonized more saints in his pontificate than all of his predecessors combined. Now, of course, he had a great slate of people to choose from because... The 20th century was the century also of greatest persecution of Christianity that the world has ever seen. This includes the beginning of the church when there was great persecution. But there were more martyrs in the 20th century than all the other centuries combined. Especially if we take into account the martyrdoms under communism and the martyrdoms under the violent persecution of the church, especially in Catholic lands like Spain and in Mexico. John Paul II, though, just didn't canonize martyrs. He also canonized, quote-unquote, everyday people. We think of the great example of St. Gianna Mola, wife, doctor, mother, who gave her life for her fourth child, who was unborn. She lost her life so that her daughter might live. We have the example of blessed pure Giorgio Frassati, a great third order Dominican, who is one of the greatest examples, especially for our dear young friends, for young adults. His relics are always brought to the World Youth Days. He was a man whom the young ladies tell me was very handsome. And this young man was a man who loved to go to parties, loved to have a good time, but also loved the Lord. Attended daily mass, prayed his rosary. When a plague broke out, he stayed behind to nurse the victims of plague, and even though he was in his mid-twenties, he could have left. But he succumbed to that plague a martyr to charity. Brothers and sisters, one of the greatest things we can do if we feel lonely, read about the saints. Get to know them. Their lives are exciting. They're the heroes of our faith. And sometimes, brothers and sisters, the saints will find us. This happens to me all the time. A saint keeps showing up in my life. I didn't didn't, uh, uh, intentionally cultivate devotion to this saint, but he or she keeps coming back. Lewis and Zelie Martin are that way with me, the parents of St. Therese. They keep showing back up. The saints can also be involved in healing, especially if we've gone through some sort of deep trauma. My friends tell me that what can often happen is they feel far from the love of God. God is someplace out there, but they can't see him. But they know the love of their brothers and sisters, and they know the love of the saints. And they say that the saints help bring them back into love with God, bring them back into relationship with God. We are not meant to be alone, and we're not alone. We have friends on earth, and we have friends above. 
And ultimately, the saints, like I said, will lead us. Whether, whatever it might have been through our lives, they will lead us back to the Lord. They'll lead us close to the Lord throughout this life, and God willing, they'll be there to welcome us home, welcome us home in heaven in the next. Let's make friends with the saints then, brothers and sisters, that we too one day might be counted in their number. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever.